All right, guys, I thought I'd sneak into the studio today. gallon mixed cube 3.5 gallon pico 6 gallon tall we're going to focus a little on that today in between our questions like I promised and over here is the 10 gallon peninsula Alright guys, check it out! Different angle today. I'm always in the same spot over there. Look at the perspective here. It's like the uh, Mona Lisa when Da Vinci started doing the perspective behind it. Tom Reefer and the perspective. Look how big it makes the studio look. I just wanted to thank some of you guys. You know, I love when you guys tell me where you're from. I got some Spain coming in, Malaysia, uh, England, of course, uh, Australia. Just shoot me up a location where you're from. I like that. I'm from Joysey. That's how it's a lot of people say it here. Let me give you the Joysey thing. East, Northeast Jersey, near the city. They talk like that. It's like a New York, Staten Island, they have the accent. But out here, I'm North Central. We don't have too much of an accent out here. We don't say New Jersey or New Jersey, however they say it. All right. Bare Bottom Reef asks, dosing Kalkwasser. All right. This is going to be a good example, guys, of how I'm not letting the three-way Kalkwasser dosing video bother me. <laughs> I'm actually going to answer a question about it. In the ATO, sets the standard for calcium and alkalinity input. How are you calculating your dosing pumps while you're also adding Kalkwasser in your ATO? And he says, especially after a water change. And my answer to that is this. It's a lot of testing. So what I did was measured calcium and alkalinity and pH, and I tested okay, but I noticed when I tested, my alkalinity would skew a little bit while I was just dosing Kalkwasser. So what I would do is I start with the most minimal amount. I started with less than five mils of two part of each one, calcium and alkalinity, each day. At the time now, I had an established tank, so I was using a lot of calcium and alkalinity. Use Kalkwasser in the beginning as things start to grow, test, see if your calcium is enough, see if your alkalinity is fluctuating, your pH. I've had some concerns about my six gallon tall lately. I haven't been pleased yeah. with the clarity of the water. It's always got particulate floating in it. I've tried skimmer on, skimmer off, skimmer on. Now the skimmer's off again. But I've done something else and it's really cleared it up. Something that I don't normally do. New viewers, this is the six gallon tall. It was five and I turned it into six because I added an external overflow box on the side. And I did that because I didn't want to keep things inside it. I wanted as minimal amount of pumps and anything inside the tank because it's so small. In terms of its height, it's not, but it's only eight inches wide by eight inches deep. Suger then asks, what is my phosphate level and what level is the max without algae problems? I told him that lately mine's been very high. One point three parts per million. That would be high in almost every case. But like I had mentioned to you guys last week or Wednesday, that I have so much algae growing in my refugium, the chato, I have hair in there, I have everything growing in there, that it doesn't grow in the display. And 
I've showed you many times before that my corals are not affected at all by that phosphate level. So there really is no specific number. You just have to watch really close. So if I see some algae growing, particularly hair algae, what I'll do is I'll test right away and see where my parameters are. And most likely, I never have a nitrate issue. Most likely, it's the phosphate, possibly. So I'll do a water change, I'll vacuum the sand bed, and like I did uh, this past week, I vacuumed the refugium. I took a lot of the detritus out of the refugium, and I brought the phosphate level down to 0 0.8. Eight, I believe and everything looks great right now so no algae in the display all right all right I just did a whole question and I didn't turn the camera on I don't know which one it was right now but I'll just do this one now oh I know which one it was I was bragging about the new channel banner guys the old one I had the five gallon to the right I moved it a long time ago so I changed the channel banner around a little bit now it's more current and the issue I started to see was that I could never get the water nice and clear and it was such a simple thing and overlooked it I don't see any particulate in the water this is really clean Because it's such a narrow tank, what was happening is my Hyger Mini Wave is set on its lowest setting and it's pulsing a wave motion. And I think what was happening was it was just creating too much of a turbulent action all the way down to the bottom and it was keeping things suspended in the water. Broke Reefer Man asked me about the sole. He's got one over a frag tank and he wanted to know how high is too high the light. Now I'm not sure if he meant over my 10 gallon in distance. So I'll give you guys both. I'll give you both. As you can see in my about eight inches above the water but what I've done since the video that I did the comparison I've lowered my cool white light way down I don't remember what my settings were uh, right now I have it on 60% cool white 40% uh, blue and 35% royal blue. That's what they are now. And that's why I put the external overflow box on. I used to have what's called the Skim 350, which surface skims the water. It acts as a water filter, so to speak. The other issue I was having is I don't know how many of you have the reef glass skimmer, but from time to time, I call it burping. Somehow it fills up with air and it's not fine bubbles and it gurgles out and bubbles, large big bubbles out the bottom. It wouldn't matter if it was in a large compartment like my 20 gallon. Even if it does stir up the bottom, it's collected in the middle container and by the time it gets to the return, there's no particulate floating around. But what happens when you do these little external overflows when they don't go to the sump it reacts like a sump and all the stuff was getting turned up inside of this and it was pushing it back into the tank this is a good one marshall asked me he's got a five gallon pico set up he's got some leathers mushroom zoas a little gsp and a baby clownfish do you think i could have a bubble tip anemone in such a small tank and I told him I would say no you know anemones sting number one number two they move around five gallons would be just too small even 10 gallons with an anemone I wouldn't recommend an anemone under 20 unless it's just an anemone only tank and it clowns oh guess who that is you guessed it right I'll be right back well, let me answer. Maybe, maybe I could answer. How did I get so lucky? I die when I look in your eyes. Then I come back alive when you touch me. That was that. 
Let's get back to the questions. You all asked about water change daily. AWOL. So what I've since done, guys, and I can't believe I waited this long, I had a filter sponge in here, but it was a very coarse one. And what was happening is the particulate was traveling through it. And I've put this filter media in here. It's kind of a really a do-it-yourselfer. I just have the big coarse sponge and then I put this more finer filter floss to collect it all. And you can see that it's it's almost gray already and I just did it yesterday. So it's collecting everything from the water and it's giving me a really nice clear look now. Normano's asked if I spill water all over your carpet every Wednesday. Yeah, it's clean, but it's like I vacuum it a lot, but I spill water on it all the time, but it's salt water, you know? It's not really smelly or dirty. I usually just sop it up and then move on. But this is, uh, you know, this is my fish room, so a little stain here and there. And every once in a while, I'll, you know, clean up, get a little stain remover and clean some stuff, but that's all. Tim. All I can say is welcome back to the hobby after 12 years. Figure out why it crashed before you start one and just go slow and watch the Tom Reefer channel. That's it. He asked me about a bubble tip and a men I wouldn't recommend an I wouldn't recommend an and he thought uh, it would have He asked me you think I could do you think, do you think I could, do you think I could have a bubble tip anemone in such a small tank? All right, guys, that's it for today. Have a great rest of the day. New viewers, welcome aboard the Tom Reefer train, as we say it. And uh, we'll see you Wednesday, water change Wednesday. And that should do it. I can't think of another thing to say except take care.